again so we're live again now uh let's say just for anyone who's who's viewing outside of the meeting uh this is the meeting of duke chad dear study group of england uk korean french association we're just talking about the achievements of the workers party of korea and its leadership and we've just been discussing free free housing free health care and free education in the uh, DPRK. Now, uh, just going to move on to the other October anniversaries of uh, the DPRK. And on the 8th of October it is the 22nd anniversary of the election of Comrade Kim Jong-il as the General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea, the ruling party in People's Korea. The decision to elect great leader comrade Kim Jong-il as the General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea reflected the yearning of the members of the Workers' Party of Korea and the entire Korean people to have him as the General Secretary of the party. It was a manifestation of the deep trust and support for the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il, who had been leading the party for many years after starting work at the Central Committee of the WPK in 1964. The great leader, Comrade Kim Jong-il, was the successor to the great leader, Comrade Kim Il-sung, who carried forward the Duce revolutionary cause and cause of Duce party building. As respected Marshal Kim Jong-un pointed out, the most important guarantee for the victory in the revolution is to strengthen the party the general staff the revolution and solidify the driving force of the revolution by uniting ser the service personnel and people around it. The great leader, Comrade Kim Jong-il, as the general secretary of the WBK, was always amongst the Korean People's Army soldiers and people, uniting them around the party, the general staff of the Korean revolution. The WPK, under the leadership of the great leader, Comrade Kim Jong-il, pushed forward with the Songun Revolution, with the Korean People's Army as the core force of the revolution. The Songun politics of the Workers' Party of Korea were developed in depth and scope by the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il as the General Secretary of the WPK. The WPK enhanced its leadership over the revolution, defeating the anti-socialist machinations of the imperialists, renegades and opportunists. During the tenure of the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il as the General Secretary of the WPK, big strides were made in developing the economy and improving living standards, as well as in the work of defence upbuilding. The fourth conference of the Workers' Party Korea took the decision to elect as its uh, eternal General Secretary, the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il, fully reflecting the aspirations of party members and popular masses to always uphold the great comrade Kim Jong-il in high esteem. Respected Marshal Kim Jong-un said, our party with him as its eternal general secretary can carry the revolutionary cause of Duce and the revolutionary cause of Songham to brilliant completion with a solid organizational ideological guarantee for leading the revolution construction to victory. Today, the achievements of the great leader, comrade Kim Jong-il, who was elected as General Secretary of the uh, WPK, sh uh, shine brilliantly. And we, Juche Idea and Songham Idea followers, recall his exploits as WPK General Secretary. The work done by comrade Kim Jong-il undoubtedly laid a firm foundation for the present and for the future. The cause of party building in the DPRK is being wisely continued by respected Marshal Kim Jong-un, who follows in the footsteps of the great leaders, comrades Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, and is identical to them. And on the 17th of October, it will be 93 years since the Down With Imperialism Union of Korea made its first appearance to the world. The Down With Imperialism Union was the first communist revolutionary organization in Korea. 
Its formation marked a clean break with the stagnant ideas of factionalism, flunkyism and dogmatism. Thus, it was a decisive leap forward in the task of building a revolutionary working class party in Korea. The DIU, uh, you know, down with imperialism union for short, broke with opportunism and also the national reformism of bourgeois nationalists. As the great leader comrade Kim Il-sung said at the meeting that founded the Down With Imperialism Union, irreconcilable contradictions exist between the imperialists and the people in the colonies, and these contradictions are sharpening with the passage of time. Because the contradictions are antagonistic, they cannot be settled by any kind of compromise and will only be solved when imperialism is overthrown. End quotation. Thus, the Korean Revolution was set out on the correct path. The foundation of the DIU by the great leader, Comrade Kim Il-sung, heralded the dawn of a new era of independence in which the popular masses became masters of their fate, masters of their destiny. Indeed, as the great leader, Comrade Kim Il-sung, said, the formation of this union, the first genuine communist revolutionary organization in our country was the historic formation of a new beginning of our revolution. With the formation of the DIU, our people's revolutionary struggle has began to progress with the principle of independence. And this was when our party began to strike glorious roots. The Down With Imperialism Union proudly proclaimed its aims were to win independence and liberation for Korea, to carry through out the socialist revolution in Korea, to build socialism and communism in Korea, and to carry out the world revolution. Thus, for the first time in history, the lines of national liberation and socialist revolution were combined. Moreover, the relationship between the national task of the working class and its international tasks was affirmed. Both the line of combining national liberation with socialism and the line of interrelating the national international tasks of the struggle were a prototype form of the Duce idea of the great leader comrade Kim Il-sung. Independence and self-reliance were the cornerstones of the Down With Imperialism Union. The Down With Imperialism Union was a new kind of revolutionary organisation founded among the youth and students of Korea, the great leader comrade Kim Il-sung had prepared the ground for the formation of the Down With Imperialism Union by leading many struggles amongst the youth and students, including a strike of school students against reactionary teachers. These struggles fostered core elements of the revolution. It was not formed from factionalists who indulged in empty uh, talk and who were divorced from the popular masses as they were drawn from the middle-class bourgeoisie and ruined aristocracy. The D, uh, Down With Imperialism Union fought for the revolution on the basis of independence. And today, the uh, ideas of the Down With Imperialism Union that was first formed by the great leader comrade Kim Il-sung are carried forward by the Glorious Workers' Party of Korea which embodies the ideas of independence and self-reliance and of fighting against imperialism to the end. Thank you for listening. Right, uh, and, Andy, you didn't want to sort of add a few words as uh, oh, New no, Communist Party General what Secretary? What you've said, I mean, the, 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 uh, Kim Il-sung was a remarkable life. I mean, he lived a long life and actually saw the fruition of many of the things that he dreamed. I mean, the only thing to say is one of the unique aspects is that it was a communist party which was built from the grassroots upwards because of all the mistakes uh, that have been made of um, factionalists, uh, people who looked at overseas models and from the Soviet Union and so on, that uh, there were communist parties before Kim Il sung. Uh, but he, he felt that they were getting nowhere. And the Down With Imperialism Union and the idea of building a grassroots movement 
which brought together young communists who were prepared to take on the mother of the Japanese Empire was extraordinary. I mean, you have to imagine in those days that most people couldn't believe that the might of Japan could be defeated. Uh, at that time, Japan was, you know, even getting stronger and stronger. Uh, and yet, um, well, I mean, we, we know when we study history what they achieved. And so it, it's a very important anniversary, not just for the Korean people, but for communists all around the world. There's no doubt in my mind that um, Kim Il-sung was the greatest Korean who has ever lived. And uh, his achievements, um, they'll go down in history for generation after generation, and that his successors are following in his footsteps. You know, I'll say this, that uh, I, uh, as, uh, someone I know well, quite well in the DPRK, he's now a retired trader. When Kim Il-sung died, uh, he was, um, you know, the communists in Korea have to do, I think it's three months in the field. And he was doing his service in uh, the north of the country. And he said, you know, there's a phrase in Korean, I can't quite remember. It's for people who are farmers. We're not, they're, they're educated in farming. Uh, they're not uh, intellectuals. Uh, Stout-hearted people, I can't remember the phrase. But anyway, he said, when Kim Il-sung died, there was a fear that the landlords would come back. And he said the party immediately said that um, his place would be taken by Kim Jong-il because the son will never betray the ideals of his father. And um, and that was very re re that was very reassuring because that's true well, certainly in Korean society. And Kim Jong Il soon after said, "Expect no change from me." That he publicly said that there, there was going to be no changes uh, and no reversals because you know, uh, amongst the in tradition in some parts of uh, Korea and in China. There's a view that when a great man dies, disasters follow because of the energy that has gone from the world. So when Mao died and Chow and Lai died, you know, there was a huge earthquake in China. People said, well, that's, you know, people are religious. Kim Sung died. Those who were superstitious said the spirit has gone. And, and they said, they, when the party had to make clear there was going to be no reversal. And uh, this is why. They're following in the footsteps. Why one of the most popular songs of the deep political songs is Footsteps. Footsteps. That's yeah. that's about Marshal Kim Jong-un. Yeah, they're following yes. in the footsteps of his father and grandfather in maintaining it. And of course, the Deep case never wavered. There's no difference now in its policies. And uh, Dermot made some reference to uh, <clears throat> some traitors who had been pardoned three times in the past, who then used the occasion of Kim Jong-il's death, died at his post and his train, to try and make their move, a despicable thing, uh, that uh, they are ultimately, at least one was executed, maybe a few more, but they had been reprimanded several times before. And there's a constant act of treason to take advantage. But it was totally rebuffed. Now nobody even talks about them. Totally defeated. So, yes, I think it's extraordinary lessons that we can learn from the experience of the DPRK. Obviously, the main one is that we have to apply socialism to our own conditions and ultimately to rely on our re own resources. But Conway to win the old communist movement before 1990 in this country, when the um, the old communist party got its money from Russia and so on. They, they, when the Soviet Union collapsed, they didn't know what to do because they thought that socialism would come through a Soviet victory in some way. Parties million strong in Europe collapsed like a pack of cards because they were dependent on Soviet money. Uh, 
And we were ones who survived. I mean, we had a deal with the Czechoslovaks, a commercial deal, but we never had any money from the Soviets. And we realized that was a blessing that we weren't dependent. And this is what the Koreans have said, that at the end of the day, you have to rely on your own resources, the independence, um, self-reliance. It doesn't mean that you don't, it's internationalism, but at the end of the day, your strength depends on the class you, you seek to represent in your own country. And so I think immense lessons, and I think history proved that Kim Il-sung was right. The only countries which have survived the collapse of the Soviet Union have all applied socialism in their own ways. In Cuba, they call it Fidelismo or Marxism. Uh, in Vietnam, it's Ho Chi Minh fault. In China, it's a mixture of Mao Zedong fault and Deng Xiaoping thinking. And now, Xi Jinping's philosophical thinking in Laos is it's a Laotian form of socialism. And this is the correct, this is the correct way forward. There are no models, but we can learn from them. Mike, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, did, did you want to speak? And yeah, then, uh... this, yeah, I just want to ask one because uh, the globally, what we hear here is a uh, it's a dictatorship in uh, North Korea, because I think you know the power leadership come to grandfather to father and uh, uh, you know the, his son. So how a communist party or workers party operates and what how they practice the democracy within the society. Right. Well, the uh, Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea elects the leadership okay. of the Workers' Party of Korea. Seventh Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea was held uh, in May 2016. That elected Marshall Kim Jong-un as chairman of the party. It elected the Central Committee and vice uh, chairman of the party. Uh, there were many delegates to that uh, Congress. Each cell of the party sends a delegate, and okay. the Workers' Party has got uh, party cells everywhere. It has three million members. Okay. So most families in the DPRK will have a party member in the family. Mm -hmm. And I think the one important thing about the Workers' Party of Korea is it's drawn uh, from all uh, walks of life uh you can you can go to the dprk you can meet waitresses and shop assistants mm -hmm. who will be party members on the other hand you will have senior academics generals and government ministers who are party members so it, it's it's a mass party mm -hmm. uh drawn through uh from all walks of life uh, in the DPRK elections are held every uh, four years for the Supreme People's Assembly mm -hmm. uh, the turnout is massive it is 99.9 percent .9%. compare that to the awful turnout uh, for elections in capitalist countries and I, I can tell you a funny story uh, <coughs> Myself and my first wife, we lived in an awful council estate in, in Kilburn. In fact, uh, say, uh, uh, Andy, same estate as Otto Kahn. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had the Euro elections one year. So we went to vote in the, the election. And the polling station staff were just so happy to see us because we were the only ones on the estate who'd gone to vote in that election and i think nationally it had uh the, the election had a turnout of about 20 percent and in fact where we were i think it was well i think it was one or two percent of the people on the estate voting uh so i think that's an important qualitative difference between uh the people's democracy of the dprk and the rotten corrupt elitist so-called bourgeois democracy Mm -hmm. uh and i mean some when i was uh doing a meeting in brazil with a few brazilian comrades they they also made made the point you know they uh media love to call the dprk leadership uh uh a dictatorship but they never say the same thing about trump 
or both scenario? Uh, I think like uh, the you know the current leader is a very young person. Yes. Um, there should be senior, uh, experienced comrades within the central committee. There are. The there are. There so, are. Yeah. So why those people uh, do not get the leadership and pass on to the same family? You, you have to ask yourself. Remember what I said about uh, yeah I, I I heard but you know I was with um I was being shown a film it was the Minister of Science and Technology and uh, our delegation and it was the opening of a fish farm and the film was shown King John and uh, the minister said at the end the, the other delegate was one of our women Conway she said you know did Kim Jong Il actually design fish farm and the minister said no he said he opened it he said obviously he supervises everything but he said in the dprk everything is decided by committees uh the leader is the rep is the embodiment of the party uh he isn't a he don't laws are not passed because of the whim of one man or his family and never have been and uh uh, in the DPRK, everything is decided by a committee, but the, the, the decision to have a, uh, Kim at the helm with his father, his father had been prime minister for many, many years, but during the Korean War, Kim Il-sung's successor was um, his close friend, his name I always forget. Kim Chaik, Kim Chaik. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just also tried to respond to the the uh point i mean i think it's good to have a, a young leader mm. because uh in the soviet union in the 80s you had a series of quite elderly leaders who succeeded one one another and uh i think died within in years of each other mm -hmm. uh, so i think you know it, it's best to have a young and able person a six as successor and I would make the point, uh, you know, after Chairman uh, Kim Jong-il passed away on the 17th of December 2011, uh, it was the party that urged Comrade Kim Jong-un to become leader. The decision came from the party. He's not the youngest okay. son. Right, right. Yeah, it's not a hereditary thing. So even though he's the leader, the all the everything decided by the party and then the, and the power of the masses he just yeah. really was really was the yes well yes. he's part of it and that was exactly the same in stalin's day and um there's the the classic argument apparently that stalin's son who wasn't very good who was died in a i think it was a plane crash when he was drunk uh, but anyway it's a legend well so it said he had a big argument with his father because he wanted more responsibilities he was a an officer in the air force and uh, he said well i'm your son and stalin said you're not my son and i'm not stalin he said what stalin means in the soviet union is soviet power and what kim jong un stands for is the power of the workers party of korea that he symbolizes he embodies the whole party but the party yes he isn't the oldest son they chose him for a whole number of reasons uh and it was a good choice and uh, i think that you see the dprk is the only socialist country where it's the third generation third generation and the imperialists really hate it for that <clears throat> reason because they there was this theory amongst imperialist policy makers that uh, no socialist country uh, should be allowed to last beyond the second generation. Mm -hmm. They should all be ended uh, after the uh, second generation. Anyway, his sums had yeah. his hand up for a long yeah. time. Uh, I need to ask this question before I go. Uh, again, I had it once on the a neutral radio station. I couldn't believe my ears that Kim Il-sung was responsible 
for transforming Korea, North Korea, from a cultural backward country to a very, very advanced technologically. In fact, it, by the time he passed away, it was more advanced technologically than South Korea and even with power with Japan. And I couldn't believe my ears when this radio station was neutral. And uh, apparently he was very technologically minded, Kim Il Sung, the founder. Yeah, well, Deep the Archive puts strong emphasis on the science and uh, technology, mm. quite quite a lot of emphasis on, on it. Uh, and all the leaders of the DPRK have done so. And of course, uh, it's very scientifically advanced because it can make nuclear weapons and uh, mm. ice, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not, not to mention things like uh, iPads, tablets, mobile phones. And they don't import any components from foreign manufacturers. I'm not sure. I I, I can't, you know, so sort of answer every uh, detail. I mean, maybe some it's amazing parts are important. I don't I don't really know. But it's not, it's not a point of principle that they... the principle is self reliance. Yeah. Uh, but and the bulk of the assembly is done. When the yeah, that's is that's done right. In the DPRK. You know, and I've seen DPRK made computers because I've been to the SciTech complex, and every single computer there was DPRK made. Yeah, it was it was more advanced than the South during his during his era. It's amazing, you know, and it was very fast for the agricultural community. So basically, everything run by the state and the DPR, you know, the Workers' Communist Party uh, in, in, in uh, DPRK. And is there any, you know, small scale or big business people in DPRK? No, I mean, everything, everything is either state-owned or it's owned by a cooperative. Oh, right, okay. Now there's there's no uh, big private businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, some people try to allege, you know, the fact you've got little stalls in the streets selling sweets. Mm -hmm. uh, some some even sell Korean Korean coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like like the dreaded NK News were saying all oh, these are private and this shows capitalism has been restored in the deep BRK just because someone's got a stall uh, selling sweets. But when I, when I asked one of my guides about this and she said, no, not private, you know, they, they're under social control. All right. Even though it's smaller. Yeah, because you also, each block of flats has what is known as a people people's neighbourhood unit, which, oh. like, runs like a local community and apparently they they actually run the the stalls okay it's the same in the cooperative farms that um there's a small area where people grow vegetables which they can sell yeah well each each farmhouse has its own mm. plot but it's not it's not like massive mm. but allotment no, not even as big yeah, as an allotment. Yeah, it's, it's just, oh, it's yeah, just it's like true. it's about. I think, I think it's about sort of twenty meters, mm. okay. twenty square meters is is the size. So you can grow your. You own can grow place. grow your own own, and if if you have a surplus, you may sell them. Oh, okay. But you know they don't have like massive <laughs> sort of private plots. Oh, you right. know. Well, of, that's what I wanted to understand. Of hundred, you know, hundreds of hectares or something like that because uh, china for example it has billionaires it? Oh, yes. so i just need to understand how the economic system runs the, the other thing is that you the the chinese traders who go to the dprk which you read about in the papers mm -hmm. they don't sell their stuff on the streets they sell them wholesale at the wholesale to market uh, to the the um, the to the people's distributors in the DPRK, 
Um, they don't do Chinese traders, and you see Chinese shirts, a lot of imported stuff, but the Chinese traders sell them wholesale, you know, okay. bundle of them. They don't actually go in the street. Oh, right. But in the DPRK, the euro and Chinese money uh, circulates. Euro, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, not the dollar. Well, the dollar's not, not at all, but the euro in hotels. Yeah, they only circulate in hotels and hotel. some shops. And and the Chinese currency because of Chinese. Uh, uh, I remember I had, when I went to a monument in the countryside and buy some flowers, mm -hmm. which was from a cooperative to lay at the thing. And my guy, Tanya Sun, she said, I said, I haven't got any uh, Korean money. She said, if you've got some Chinese, He'll take it, you see. But the 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 NK News, they know it's they, they know they're telling lies, mm. but they they try to give this impression mm. um, because the what they call a reforms actually existed in the Soviet Union as well. In uh, that's in the Soviet Union, the farmers always had a. A, a surplus. That yeah, was... I think we're a little bit in danger of getting sidetracked mm. here, but good point about NK News, and we always say to anyone, you know, that this is a CIA-run website, you know, which is actually based in South Korea with a lot of the staff are ex-US Army, ex-South Korean Army, uh, and from the CIA and the South mm -hmm. Korean National Intelligence Service, and it pretends it's very objective uh, and who clever. For, I mean, so sorry. So, who, who is it formally know. incorporated by? I, Do, I are you aware? Let me give, right. give a no, it's a mystery about who, who's who really own, owns owns it. It's something something with a funny title like NK Consulting, but you know, no one's ever been able to track down. Who's really behind it? And the editorial right. policy makes it pretty clear. Sorry? I suppose the, the editorial policy makes it pretty clear. Yeah. I mean, they, they're they owned by an entity that's registered in the US, but they operate out of South Korea. And in the past, they were based in London. That's why you got those two jokers yeah. turn up at, at that picket. black arms of disinformation. And I have very reactionary uh, anti-DPRK academics mm. working for them, you know, like that, uh, like that drunken Russian Lankov. And he's based in Seoul, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he actually teaches at a South Korean mm. university. You can trace back a lot of anti DPRK writing to ba basically academics who are who are teaching at South Korean universities but are, aren't actually Koreans. That's true of all intelligence services uh, in Britain, St Anthony's College in Oxford, is a think tank of British intelligence, allegedly. Right, okay. Um, any other business, anything people want to raise? Mm. Actually, it's time for me to leave. leave as well okay. Anyway, it's really nice to uh, meet you as well. I have met Comrade Andy earlier. It's, it's a pleasure to uh, have this opportunity as well. I got a lot of information about Vietnam, Korea because as I said earlier, I, we didn't have that much information. We have information that coming from the normal, you know, capitalist media. Misinformation. <laughs> misinformation. Yes. But I really interested getting more and more information as well. But uh, anyway, we are, as I explained, uh, we are in the process of talking to uh, communist parties, progressive movement, solidarity, group, solidarity groups to seek what we can do together because everywhere every a lot of small small groups talking and doing things but we i think somehow we need to do something together and wherever we can do together because of course we can't do everything together because we have some difference mm. as well as parties but uh, we are uh, in the process of trying to find a way 
how we can work together. And yes. it's a pleasure to be here as well. Well, thank you very much yeah. for, for coming. Uh, no we, we'll be holding probably a meeting at the end of October to report back from the delegation that's going to the DPRK right. and probably a meeting late November to try and avoid the Christmas period uh, as well. And we've got an online meeting coming up, you know, using a messenger okay. group call. We've got that uh, coming up if, if you're on face, Facebook at yeah. all. Yeah, uh, I have joined your group uh, uh, already. Um, uh, so I think I, I might get that information from Facebook. Uh, I have an invitation as well, but I will send the uh, comrade Andy as well, proper invitation, because we, uh, in 1987, 89, we had the second struggle to capture the power in Sri Lanka. So uh, more than, I think, nearly 100,000, because according to government numbers, it's more than 60,000 comrades were killed and all the leadership were killed and uh, destroyed the party. So we are commemorating them on the 16th of November. So I will send uh, comrades uh, in the invitation. If you can come and participate in that event, that would be yes. great. And definitely, uh, if when you a delegation comes back, we will definitely. Uh, I, I can bring some few more comrades. That somewhere. will be that will be great. Yeah, and I think because one time um, there was a group. Uh, they had the delegation went to Cuba, and there was a report back. I went to that meeting as well, but um, unfortunately, I couldn't get that. Uh, group back. I, I sent some messages but they didn't reply. But we actually because we have a community of like we can gather like 40, 50 people some normally. Um in a in a meeting, in important meeting with our power. You know, uh, but we would like to share this information with those them, them as well. But we can arrange a meeting. If you comrades can come and you know once the delegation comes back, uh, if they can uh, because may, basically we are in Harrow area north london side so we can arrange a meeting and because that delegation is there so if they can come and you know uh, explain and share the information that what they get i think that will be really good as well uh, if, if, if it can be done uh, but anyway it's time to go as well okay right. uh, thank, thank you very much thank, thank you very for much coming. Fred, and uh, uh, we'll see you soon yes and see please you. Um, uh, keep us informing your meetings and everything we will try to come not each and everyone but at least we try to come. Yes, that will be great yes. if you do. So thank you very much. Anyway. Thank you. And thank you, comrade. Bye -bye. See you then. Huh? See you. Comrade. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi. Right. So no one's got any no, I think else to raise. I mean, I've got a. Uh, uh, letter to adopt to respected Marshal Kim Jong Un, which uh, we we can adopt, and then I then I will close close the meeting unless anyone else can think of any other business that they want to discuss. Okay, uh, well the letter is as follows: London, twenty first of September, two thousand nineteen. To Supreme Leader Marshal Kim Jong Un, Chairman Workers' Party Korea, Chairman State Affairs Commission DPRK, Marshal DPRK, Supreme Commander Korean People's Army. Dear respected Marshal Kim Jong Un, we, the participants in this meeting called by the Duke Dear Study Group of England, UK KFA, an association for the study of Sungum politics. UK sincerely wish to send our greetings to you on the occasions of the 22nd anniversary of the election of the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il as General Sector Workers Party of Korea on the 8th of October, the 74th anniversary of the foundation of the Workers Party of Korea on the 10th of October and the 93rd anniversary of the formation of the Down with Imperialism Union on the 17th of October. The election of the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il as General Secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea was a great event that marked a turning point in the history of the Juche Revolution in Korea and was decisive in carrying forward the cause of party building in people's Korea. The foundation of the Workers' Party of Korea, which is the Supreme General Staff of the Korean Revolution and the organiser of the victories of the Korean people, was a significant event 
that saw the birth of a party of a new type in Korea. The Workers' Party Korea is a shining example to revolutionary parties throughout the world. The formation of the Down with Imperialism Union by the great leader Comrade Kim Il sung marked the birth of the first communist revolutionary organization and constitutes the bedrock of the revolutionary traditions of the Workers' Party Korea. Today, under your leadership, the Workers' Party Korea is marching forward under the banner of anti imperialism, independence, and self reliance. We are convinced that by upholding the banner of self reliance, the Korean people will win final victory. We wish you every success in your work and good health. So, everyone agreed? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So, as I say, thank everyone who made the effort to, to attend uh, uh, for attending uh, this meeting. Uh, we'll be posting uh, a, a video report of this on Facebook and YouTube. And probably other reports to say we'll be having a meeting at the end of October to report back from the delegation and meeting probably 30th of November uh, to mark the December anniversaries of the DPRK and uh, you know we'll probably be having some regional activities as well uh, local meetings like as many people to participate them in them as possible anyway um, so all all i need to say now is uh, uh goodbye comrades and safe journey home thank you